Today, I'm gonna show you how to make an easy ribbed beanie. And this tutorial is very simple. It's definitely something a beginner could do. I'm only gonna be using half double crochet and single crochet, so nothing too fancy. I'm gonna be showing you two versions. One of them is just gonna be solid color, so you don't have to worry about color changing if you're new to crochet. And I'm also gonna be showing you a version where you switch color every row. This isn't very complicated either, it just adds another layer to it. And I'm gonna be showing you a basic pattern that I think will fit most heads, but I'll show you how I'm gauging the size. So if you'd like to change how many rows or initial chains you're doing, you can totally do that. I'll also be walking you through every stitch. I'll try to break down everything the best I can. I'm gonna be using a five millimeter hook and just any regular weight four yarn will work with this. For the first solid hat, I'm gonna be using this Lion Brand basic stitch yarn in this oatmeal color. And then for the one that's alternating color stripes, I'm using Big Twist Living and is this Karen, 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 whatever, Simply Soft. And all of these are weight four. You're also gonna need some scissors, a needle to weave in your ends and stitch up the hat. And I'm gonna be using these stitch markers to mark some stitches and help myself out. The very first thing I'm gonna do is create a row of chains and I'm gonna start from where I want the hat to sit on my forehead and then the very crown of my head. So the chains are gonna go from here all the way back, also accounting for how much of a fold we want. So I'll show you how I'm gonna do that now. So the first thing I'm gonna do is create a slip knot. And to do this, I'm twisting the yarn around my finger, grabbing the yarn and pulling it through to create a loop. And then I'm just inserting my hook and tightening the yarn so that it's nice and tight around my hook. And to create a chain, I'm taking my hook and putting it under my yarn, grabbing that yarn and pulling it through. Yarning over, pulling up a loop. Yarning over, pulling up a loop. And I'm just gonna continue this for 44 chains. Okay, so I just chained 44 chains and I'll show you how I'm kind of comparing that to my head making sure it fits. I'm taking my row of chains and folding one end of it however thick I want the fold on the brim of my hat to be. So I'm kind of folding it one, two, three, like around 10, 11, 12 chains. And then I'm gonna take the top of it, place it at the crown of my head, and then place the bottom where I want the bottom of my hat to fit. And as you can see, seems like it's gonna be a good fit. What you don't want is for it to be really short. So let's say you fold it and you know, you have it at the crown of your head and it only reaches like your hairline, that's gonna be way too small. So now for the first row, I'm gonna be doing half double crochet all the way down until I reach a point where I have eight chains left over. Then for the last eight stitches, I'm gonna be doing single crochet. So what I'm gonna do right now is count from the farthest end, eight stitches, and I'm gonna put a stitch marker there so that I know when to switch my stitch. So I'm counting eight stitches and into the eighth stitch, I'm inserting a stitch marker. From the other end, I'm chaining two as a turning chain. So anytime we do a half double crochet, the turning chain will be two chains. And then skipping those two chains into the third chain from my hook, I'm yarning over, inserting my hook into that chain, yarning over, pulling up a loop so that I have three loops on my hook, and then yarning over again and pulling through all three loops. And that is how you do a half double crochet. I'm repeating that process all the way across and stopping right before my stitch marker.
So there's my last stitch before the stitch marker. And now I can start doing single crochets. I'm gonna remove my stitch marker because now I know that I need to switch stitches. To do a single crochet, don't yarn over, just insert your hook, yarn over, pull up a loop, and then yarn over and pull through those two. And I'm doing eight of these until I reach the end of row one. I've completed row one, and now to help myself out on the next row, I'm counting eight stitches from the left and inserting a stitch marker back in there so that I know when to switch from single crochet back to half double crochet, since we're working in the opposite direction now. So now that I have my first row with half double crochets ending with eight single crochets, the next thing I need to do for row two is begin the ribbing. So how I'm gonna do the ribbing is by doing the same stitches, working single crochets on top of single crochets and half double crochets on top of half double crochets, but I'm gonna be working in the back loops only. The next thing we need to do is chain one as a turning chain, work eight single crochets into the back loop, and then finish off the row by continuing half double crochets in the back loop. Now I need to turn to start more single crochets. So for a single crochet turning chain, I'm chaining one, and now I need to start working in the back loops. Normally for a single crochet, you would insert your hook into the front, pulling up both parts of that V. Instead, I'm inserting my hook in the center of the V and pulling up just that back loop and then completing my single crochet. Again, inserting my hook in the center towards the back, pulling up that back loop only and finishing my stitch. I'm repeating this for eight stitches, including the stitch that my stitch marker is hooked around. After I've done eight single crochets, I can remove my stitch marker because now I know to start my half double crochets. And I'm inserting it on the end just so I know which end has the single crochets. Now I can start doing my back loop half double crochets. And that is how I'm going to finish row two. And now I'm gonna continue, not forgetting that I have to switch to single crochets before the last eight stitches. I'm chaining two, turning my work and continuing back loop half double crochets. So the pattern is half double crochets, single crochets, chain one, single crochets, half double crochets, chain two, half double crochets, single crochets, chain one, and so on. So the single crochets at the end are gonna be the top of your hat, and then the side that ends with half double crochets is gonna be where you fold the hat. And we're basically working this wide enough for it to be able to wrap around our head and not be too tight, but you wanna make sure you're not just wrapping it like this because there will be a fold and that's gonna make it a little bit tighter. So as you build it out, you wanna make sure you keep 
holding it up to your head and making sure you're accounting for that fold. So I'll meet you back here when I have enough rows for it to wrap all the way around my head. I've done 52 rows and I'll show you what that looks like. Remember, we're folding the brim when we try it on just to make sure it's not too tight, but it reaches, let me put it on the other way so you can see. So it reaches all the way around my head. Obviously this will be closed in the end, but this is kind of what it should look like. And now our next task is to connect both ends so that we have one continuous loop. Also, I only ended up needing one of these. These are 100 grams and 185 yards or 170 meters. And with my hat being almost done, I still have a little bit left. So if that helps you gauge how much yarn to buy, you want to make sure that the row that you ended with is not the same in the sense of the ribbing as the row you started with. So I'm making sure I ended with a raised rib and I had started with the low rib so it gives like a seamless connection. So I'm tying off my yarn by chaining, cutting my yarn and then pulling that loop through and really making a tight knot. Now I'm gonna be working right to left to connect my panels together. So start on the very right side and insert your hook into the same stitch on both sides. Then grab your yarn and loop it over your hook, pulling it through both stitches. Then taking both strands, the tail and the working yarn, I'm yarning over, pulling through for a chain to connect my yarn, and then dropping that tail. I'm continuing all the way across, working right to left, inserting my hook into the same stitch on both sides, and doing single crochets. So inserting hook to one, inserting hook to two, yarning over, pulling up a loop, yarning over and pulling through two. And once you reach the end of your row, you can see here I'm just finishing my last stitch, making sure you go all the way to the end. With the yarn still connected, I'm measuring two times the height of my hat for yarn that I'm gonna use to cinch the top of the hat. So I cut that off and then I tie it off by chaining and pulling the yarn all the way through. I'm pulling really tight. And then I went back to the bottom to tie those two loose tails together just to secure the yarn I used to stitch the hat up. And here you can see it gives a pretty seamless connection. Now to cinch the hat, I'm connecting my yarn to the needle. And starting where my yarn is connected, I'm just gonna be alternating going below and above the ribbing. I'm going under the rib, over the rib, under, over, and occasionally pulling my needle through. Again, over, under, over, under, and pulling my yarn through. 
And I'm just continuing that all the way around until I get back to where I started, which is where you'll see that loose tail from earlier. Alright, I made it all the way around and I'm going to pull the yarn that I was working with really, really tight to make sure I'm closing up that gap completely. And then taking that loose tail from earlier and tying a really tight double knot. Then I'm taking my needle, and there's no science to this, but I'm just inserting it randomly across that hole to make sure that the gap is completely closed, pulling it tight each time. And then I'm just taking my needle off and tying another double knot or triple knot to make sure it's really secure and it won't come undone. Here I'm just snipping the tails so that they're a little bit shorter, turning the hat right side out, and then folding up the brim. We're done! So here it is on. You can see that that measurement we took in the beginning was really important because it starts right where I wanted it on my forehead and goes all the way to the crown of my head. So now that I've showed you the single color version, I'm just going to show you really quickly how to change colors if you wanted to do something like this. So if you're a beginner and you've never alternated colors before, it's very easy um, and I'll show you how to do that really quickly right now. So everything is business as usual for the first two rows. I decided that for this hat, I'm changing color every two rows instead of every row. So I'm just doing, like I showed earlier, row one and row two like normal. Now on the last stitch of row two, I'm yarning over, inserting my hook, and pulling up a loop. And before I finish, my half double crochet. I'm gonna pull that yarn forward just to hold it tight, grab my new color, loop it around my hook and pull it through to complete the last stitch. And you can just pull on the yarn a little bit to adjust it so that it's not loose. I'm pulling the new color's tail aside and chaining two with my new color as a turning chain. Now when I turn my work, when I work my half double crochets into the back loop, I'm also going to include the new color's tail and the old color's working yarn. This will allow me to continue with my first color once I reach the end of the pink because it will be readily available instead of cutting it each time and having a million ends to weave in. And I'm doing this all the way across for two rows. I'm just going to show you quickly when you reach the end of your first row that pink tail has been covered by now because it was pretty short. The working yarn from before when you turn your work you just want to pull it behind and continue working with it as normal don't leave it behind. And this is how you'll change color each time. So once I finish row two of the pink on my last stitch, instead of pulling the pink through to finish it, I am going to pull the pink aside and grab the green yarn that I was carrying and then continue as normal carrying the pink yarn.
I finally finished the one that I was color changing with. Here you can see I alternated every two rows and it gives a little thicker stripe, but I also made this one which alternates every other stripe, just so you can see the difference. So depending on what you want, you can change the thickness of the stripes or just do something solid like this one. That's it for the tutorial today. If you make this beanie, I'd love to see your creations. So please tag me on Instagram or TikTok at Aliznuts. I think that'd be so cool. And if you're struggling with something, please leave a comment and I'd love to help you out. I'm planning to make a few more easy, beginner-friendly tutorials in the near future. So subscribe to stay notified when those come out and I will see you soon.